I don't know. It's, it's just, I don't, it's hard to describe. To most, the Stanley Cup is just a trophy. But for players, it's a symbol of sweat, determination, and a shared love for the game. Although the Stanley Cup is awarded to the NHL's best team, the Cup's history goes way further back than just the NHL. In 1892, Lord Stanley of Preston wanted to commission a trophy for the best team in Canada's finest amateur hockey league. So he went out and bought one. Lord Stanley bought the trophy for about 10 guineas, which was about $50 at the time, translating to a little under 1700 bucks. So it was a pretty pricey trophy, but definitely worth every penny. Little did he know he was planting a seed for a legacy that would span generations. Fast forward to today, and the cup is the ultimate prize in professional ice hockey, and the dream that every NHL player chases. It's not just about winning, it's about the raw emotion, the overtime thrillers, and the heart-stopping moments that make the journey unforgettable. When you see a player hoist that cup, you're witnessing the culmination of years and years of hard work, sacrifices, and camaraderie. It's a reminder that even during fierce competition, sports can bring us together in celebration of something bigger than ourselves. And in the 130 years of the Stanley Cup's existence, it has gone through many changes. The first version of the Stanley Cup was not what it is today, to say the least, and it actually wasn't even named the Stanley Cup. It was the Dominion Cup at the time, which was awarded to the champion of the Amateur Hockey Association of Canada, which included just five teams. The winner of the Dominion Cup that year was the Montreal Hockey Club, and the cup was quickly given its nickname after the Ottawa Journal used the Stanley Cup as the trophy's name in an article. The next year had a whole new look for the Stanley Cup, as it now used tears. This was the look of the trophy from 1893 all the way up until 1926. In this time, the trophy saw the collapse of two leagues and the birth of a new one. The Amateur Hockey Association of Canada disbanded in 1898, and the National Hockey Association disbanded in 1917. And with the death of those two leagues, the NHL was finally created. The winner of the NHL's first Stanley Cup was the Toronto Arenas, who defeated the Vancouver Millionaires of the PCHA. And if you guys want to learn more about that first season of the NHL, make sure to check this video out. The Cup then stayed in Canada for the next eight seasons, before the newly added New York Rangers won it in just their second season in the league. They also won the first stovepipe version of the Stanley Cup. The NHL used the stovepipe Stanley Cup from 1926 up until 1947, and it saw the end of the formative years of the NHL and the start of the original six era. With each winner, a new ring would be added every single year, which could explain why it got so out of hand. In 1948, the cup was redesigned, as the stovepipe cup was just becoming too difficult to handle with the extra rings being added. The base was moved back to the top of the bowl, and a new shoulder was added. All the teams that won during the stovepipe era were then combined into nine unique rings, with blank space for the next batch of winners. In the first year of what would become the original six era, the Leafs won the first Stanley Cup final to go to seven games, and did so after losing the first three games to Detroit. During this era, the Leafs and Canadians each won 10 cups, with the Red Wings winning five and the Blackhawks winning one. Beginning in 1958, the new design leaned more into the concept of putting multiple winning teams on the same ring, settling on 13 teams per ring. In order to maintain the size of the modern era cup, rings must be retired every 13 years, and when they are, they are put into the Hockey Hall of Fame. Since the 1914-1915 season, the cup has been won 103 times by 20 current NHL teams and 5 teams that no longer exist. It was not awarded in 1919 because of the Spanish flu epidemic, and it was not awarded in 2005 because of the NHL lockout. Their franchise that has won the most Stanley Cups is the Montreal Canadiens, who have won 24 Cups, which is 11 more than the second-place Toronto Maple Leafs. And through those 25 franchises that have won a Cup, there have been over 3,300 names etched into the Cup. 
and the name that appears the most on the cup is Jean Beliveau, as he appears on the cup 10 times as a player and 7 times as management for 17 times, all with the Canadians. There is little debate that the Stanley Cup is the most outstanding trophy in all of professional sports. However, no trophy in the world can create the party or the type of attention that this piece of hardware can. Players work their entire careers towards hoisting that trophy, and everyone gets their own day with the cup when their team is finally successful. And these guys definitely make the most of it. With just 24 hours with the trophy, players do not hold back, and even doing some pretty headline-worthy stuff. And one recent story that comes to mind is the summer of Ovi. Ovechkin's playoff success up until 2018 was nothing to write home about. With the second round being his kryptonite, he could never break through and find success. But in 2018, he finally broke that barrier and went on to win the coveted Stanley Cup. And he was excited. The partying began right as they got into the locker room, then he brought it to the nightclub, the Washington Nationals game, he took a bath in a fountain, slept with it, and this was all before the Stanley Cup parade even took place. The party obviously continued during the parade, and this is where Ovi had his famous line. We're not gonna be fucking sunk this year! While this is one of the more memorable Stanley Cup celebrations, there are plenty more that are worth talking about. The 1940-1941 season was a significant one for the New York Rangers. In addition to winning the Stanley Cup, the team paid off their mortgage on their world-famous arena, Madison Square Garden. To celebrate, the Rangers lit the mortgage on fire and put it in the cup, only to cause the cup to light on fire as well. But it wasn't to worry as the players put out the fire with their own urine. And one of the weirder Stanley Cup stories out there is when the Stanley Cup ended up in the bottom of Mario Lemieux's pool. After winning the 1991-92 Stanley Cup with the Pittsburgh Penguins, Lemieux decided to go swimming with the trophy in his in-ground pool. It did not work as he hoped, and the trophy ended up at the bottom of the pool with him. After Lemieux retired, he joined the Penguins' front office and went on to win three more Stanley Cups in 2009, 2016, and 2017, all where the tradition continued. While the cup has been to many parties, it's also had a lot of food in it, including Lucky Charms, ice cream, lobster, chicken wings, poutine, and many, many, many more. The Stanley Cup is not only a coveted prize, but also a profound symbol of the essence of hockey itself. Its legacy, spanning well over a century, is a testament to the sport's rich history. From its humble beginnings in the late 1800s, the cup has evolved into an icon that transcends time, deeply embedded within the game. The cup witnesses both the champion's success and the contender's defeat. It is a silent spectator to the stories of underdogs who defied the odds and dynasties that filled the history books. It echoes the passion of players, coaches, and fans, representing a shared journey of dedication and devotion. The mere existence of the cup can leave players speechless. The legacy of the cup is not just etched in its silver, but also in the roots of the sport, carrying its meaning for generations to come.